Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the KCAC and IUP basketball. This is Jack Benedict along with Tony Cacagna, and we're here at the beautiful KCAC to broadcast an IUP basketball game. Now, that's something a little different. Tony, it's been a while. I look back in my scorebook here, and it remained vacant since March 8th of last year when IUP was getting ready, you know, wrapping up the season, getting ready for the big regional tournament, and, of course, none of that happened. Yeah, it's going to be a huge production here, both the men's and women's teams playing basketball here, and IEP, the men were just coming off a conference championship and a, just a really good game at down at Shippensburg, and you're just ready to go. And, well, that Thursday before the tournament was supposed to start, as we all know, you know, a lot of things stopped that day, and sports were one of them. Yeah, and the PSAC was one of them. You know, it's really been strange. I don't have to tell you that in the last uh, year, 2020. And college basketball has been strange, too. If you look at Division One, you see what's happening. They're playing the tournament. Some teams have had to opt out. As far as Division Two is concerned, we have teams playing all types of games. Clarion, the Golden Eagles, are the opponents today. They've played 10 games. IUP has played two. And some teams, like the NCAA Division II tournament, Mercyhurst, for instance, undefeated, they're qualifying at large to a national tournament. It's just zany, isn't it? Yeah, and you know what? If I'm if I'm a basketball team in Division II in this region playing basketball right now, I'm kind of licking my chops because you know what? If I want to play in the national tournament, I don't have to go through any of the Pennsylvania teams. And those are, well, we know. those. IUP has one of the best programs in, in East Stroudsburg, a Westchester, a, a Gannon, a Mercyhurst. Those two teams are playing, but uh, there are some good teams that are just sitting on the sidelines this year. That is a very good point. I didn't think of it in that way, but exactly right. Uh, the teams have uh, managed to avoid the PSAC. Well, let's bring you up to date a little bit here. First of all, uh, to make it even more bizarre, the statistics in the game today count because it is being considered a game and not a scrimmage. So Joe Lombardi comes in now at 334 and 103 with one and one after losing up at Gannon to the, at the Hammer Mill Center and then coming away with a win here over Gannon. So it's just strange that uh, that's, a, that's happening. And when, you know, years to come, when people look in the record book, they won't know any of this. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the NCAA has granted athletes who are participating in sports, and this does not count about uh, against their eligibility. So they're getting an extra year of eligibility. So if a guy's playing five years, we were talking about Armani Foster, who has a pretty good chance to, to break the IEP uh, career scoring record. Mm -hmm. Well, if IEP was playing this year, like Mercy Erst and Gannon are playing multiple games, he would have a chance to set a record that nobody would ever be able to touch. Exactly right. Let's uh, introduce you to these players because uh, IUP has been operating with about eight guys. They're, they're dressing more. They have more dress. Clarion is on uh, seven, seven players right now is what they have. Uh, for IUP, we're going to see Dave Morris. We remember Dave, of course, the uh, redshirt junior now. And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to give you the classifications that I'm assuming are correct <laughs> as the way they have it on the IUP roster now. Dave's a... Redshirt Jr., 6-1 out of Erie. Armani Foster, we talked about Armani, his buddy out of Meadville, Jr., Redshirt Jr. at 6-4, averaging 17.5. Boy, he's had some strain. He had 30 points in the first game and five in the second. 30 points in the game they lost, five in the game they won. <laughs> crazy. I mean, that's how crazy this is. Uh, we have uh, Ethan Porterfield, the sophomore, at 6-8. What a freshman year he had out of Sharon. He's averaging 12.5. Tommy D, Tommy Dio, uh, Demo Gerontis. Tommy's situation is interesting, too. He's a grad student, 6'8". He's out of Orland Park, Illinois, transferred from Northern Illinois, played four games, had to have surgery. I, I can't even remember. Well, the only reason I remember him playing is the other day I was watching on the video somewhere in well, the first game, but he's only played four games. Yeah, and I remember him playing because I remember the first time seeing him play, and I'm thinking, boy, this guy just glides up and down the court. He's just a real smooth lefty, and uh, it just broke my heart the day he tore his ACL. But you know what? These guys rallied around that and just were really, you know, built themselves up throughout the season and were really playing well in the March. 
And, boy, I think they really could have gone on quite a run last year, and I think they could have this year had they been playing basketball. Mm -hmm. All right, the fifth member of the starting lineup today, the uh, possible starting lineup, is K.J. J uh, Rhodes. K.J. is a redshirt freshman, Pittsburgh. He played out of IMG Academy. He is uh, about 6'4", as we said. He's averaging 3.5 a game. Uh, so those are the guys who are expected to start today and have played most of the, the time. Uh, other guys who have played, Bryce Radford is the redshirt freshman, sharpshooter, six feet tall from Beckley, West Virginia, and uh, he has seen some action, and he will he'll be a backup point guard. He had quite a high school career <laughs> down there in Beckley. A lot of people wanted him. Yeah, he was, you know, he could put up 50 like it was nothing. You know, he's just a really, really good shooter, really good player, and came here and sat last year and watched uh, how things happen here. And I would imagine, you know, I've seen players develop in this program over the years. He's going to be a good one. And he was injured, too, remember? Yes. Yeah, he had an injury. Uh, also, uh, you're going to see a guy who is uh, well, 6 feet 10. We're just going to call him Uzi. Uzi Diop. And uh, Uzi is a 6'10 junior. He's from Senegal. He's averaging 12 or 2.5 a game. Uh, pencil thin, but he's got that height and uh, he'll he'll learn as things go along and gain experience but one of the taller players in the history of iup yeah and he's going to be a, a defensive presence i think he's still a little bit raw offensively but uh that's something the coaches are working on with him but he is a presence around the basket though on, on the defensive end a veteran dylan benton has not been playing in the previous games but he's a senior he'll be back this year from bangor pennsylvania six five one of those scrappy type players who helps uh here and there in any way he can we've seen we've seen some of those players in the past come through the iup system yeah yeah a few uh, a few and uh let's see who else we want to mention here well we got to mention this guy and this is tombawa sulaman he is a freshman at 6 6 he's from london england and he's averaging 10 and a half a game in two games 10 and a half rebounds a game in two games he had a Big double-double in game number two, Tony. Yeah, I know very little about him. Uh, I know the IEP coaching staff was thrilled uh, when they got him. He is uh, he's from overseas. He's from London, London England. And uh, I know they were just really excited when uh, they got him to come here. Sports Information Director Ryan Repholz told me when he watched him the other day at the game that was here, uh, not actually here, was in Indiana, was at the Memorial Fieldhouse because there was wrestling going on here, said, Tevin Hanner reminds, this kid reminds him of Tevin Hanner who could jump out of the building. Yeah, and just, just a very athletic guy, an energy guy, you know, a guy that, you know, when you put him on the court, he's going to give you two, four solid minutes, and uh, then he's going to go sit down for a couple, come back in and do it again. Mm -hmm. We are on, uh, well, the opposite side from where we normally broadcast. We're in the concourse area, the second t tier. The officials are down below talking with Coach Joe Lombardi and mentioned his He's coming in. This will be 15th, or it is 15th year now. Yeah. You, I mean, you How got about that. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> 334 wins, 103 defeats. He has reached 300 quicker than any coach in the PSAC. And, of course, the uh, record speaks for itself. We'll, we'll give you some stats on the team as we go along. And for Clarion, their coach is Damian Pitts. And Damian was a head coach at Centenary. This is his second year at Clarion, but he was a long-time assistant at Millersville, almost two decades, as a matter of fact. So, again, Clarion's been trying to build their program for quite a few years, and uh, eventually they'll, you know, they'll get some players in there. Uh, I know one thing. I like their facility yeah, now. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, they have that new facility up there. It's really nice, so I'm sure that's an attraction for kids. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that last year. Uh, coming into the game, Clarion in with a record of four and six. They lost to Malone, 92-74. Then they paid uh, Robert Wesleyan twice. They beat him 80-77 and lost by 20, 86-66. Then they played Mercyhurst, who's undefeated, 91-54. They lost to them. They lost to Gannon twice, 72-60 and 83-63. They lost to Salem, 99-73, and then beat Salem, 91-87. And uh, they strung together two more wins over Bryant and Stratton College, 86-69. And their most recent game the other day was a win over Mount Aloysius, 67-42. They've won three in a row. I was told we were not going to have the anthem, but I was told incorrectly, I guess, because we are having right now 
our national anthem. Well, it's a very strange situation, but the best thing about this is we get to watch IUP basketball and we get to broadcast it. Yeah, and you know we get to talk about it, and we've been talking about it for the last few days. It's just really weird being here because this place is absolutely empty except for the teams and us and a few other people who are putting on this production. And it's just, uh, you know, we're we're used to seeing three thousand people in this place, and you know, it's just it's just really. Well, you know, it's just the yeah. way the times have been. So, um, what was it? I think we had five consecutive games of three thousand, yeah. yep. at least three thousand, and of course, uh, the Crimson Hawks coming off another great year last year. So we get ready for IUP basketball. We want to thank the folks at SeaWorld Satellite for the hookup here today, and I uh, understand we're. We're being heard all over the world, so that's good. And we got the boss sitting over there at SeaWorld, and he's running the camera today. Yeah, <laughs> Rick Miller's running the camera. Coming out, it's going to be Ethan Porterfield jumping center for IUP, and he'll be jumping against Lawrence Lemon, a 6'7 senior. We're sitting in the stands. We have our scorebooks on our lap, and it's like the, the old days. <laughs> uh, Tommy Wall's starting for... IEP it looks like Jack. Yeah, well he's had two great yeah, he's had two great starts. So here we go. Clarion gets the tip and Clarion will have the ball as they move it on the right wing over to Jarman. Jarman gives it up top. Trying to work against the IUP man to man on the right elbow and back to the left wing with it. Gonna take a shot of three ball there and it goes down. Counted three for Lawrence Lemon. Clarion first shot and, and he knocked it home. Armani Foster over to uh, the left wing over here. They swing it, get it underneath, man open, layup good. Ethan Porterfield on the feed. Boy, he had a good freshman year, didn't he? Yeah, and, you know, he wasn't going to play until Tommy Tommy went down, and then uh, well, he just really, you know, as the season went on, he just got better and better. He had a really good game down at Shippensburg in the championship game. No penetration here, double teaming on the sideline. Lemon feeds it in the corner and back outside for a three ball from the same spot with a different player. And Mason Moraz knocks down the three. A redshirt junior out of Newcastle and two three balls. And it is a six to two game with Clarion with the lead. IUP with a basketball right now. And we've got a whistle, first whistle of the game. Bryce Radford starting today, the uh, freshman. And they're going to call it on Kaysen Branch. We're going to have to be alerted to the officials call on because there's no PA system. Radford is going to inbound the ball into Foster. Armani in traffic, going to put it up too hard. Rebound IUP, Tommy D, right hand short. Clarion rebound, they lead 6-2. Here they come. Dribble drive to the hoop, comes up short. Sullivan with a rebound over to Radford. 18-footer, back rim, no good. Offensive rebound and a putback attempt, and we've got a foul on Clarion. We're going to get two shots. That's on, um, I think it was on 34, Moraz. Yeah, it's Sullivan going to the line. Yeah. 6-2, Clarion with the lead. We're just underway here at the KCAC. Tomoa Suleiman at the line. And he is a really good looking player. This one, no good. Not only is he 6'6", uh, six, six, you know, we, we talked about maybe comparisons with uh, Tevin Hander. He's got a little more bulk, I think. 
Second shot on its way. Got one out of two. Clarion with the lead, 6-3, 18-20. We're counting here at the KCAC. This is Jack Benedict with Tony Cacogna. And IUP basketball, Lemon with the ball up top. Release man out here to Moraz. Right back to Lemon, tries to dribble drive to the hoop, puts it up with the left hand. We're going to get a foul on IUP. Blocking foul on Radford. Radford picking up the foul. That's his first. Lemon had a double-double against Mount Aloysius. They played on Wednesday. Had to just think actually what day this is. He had 16 points, 10 rebounds in the game. He just airballed it. <laughs> wow. He just drained that three from the left side there, and then <laughs> yeah. just, that one just barely nicked the rim. Skimmed off there. Second shot coming, 6-3, Clary in the lead. 18.07, we are in the first half on its way, and it is too strong. Back iron into the hands of Porterfield, down the right side to Armani. Foster in traffic underneath, and the layup is no good. Fighting for the rebound, it's loose. Porterfield comes up with it, leans in and scores. Ethan with two deuces, 6-5, Clarion. Coming for court is Steve Kelly. Kelly is a freshman, 5'11". Bring it up top over, Kelly with it. Kelly guarded by the much larger Porterfield in the left corner, shot on its way deep in the left corner, and that's a three ball. And added up for Kaysen Branch. They have three trays for nine points. 9-5, nine, Clarion. And good job swinging the ball there against the IEP trap. Out to Porterfield. And they swing it nicely to Tommy D. And he tries to drive the baseline, but we've got a kick. And it's IUP ball. Shot clock's at 20. And we're going to have the first substitution for IUP. And here comes K.J. Rhodes. And he'll replace Tomawa Suleiman. Radford inbounding the ball and having trouble doing it, it. Almost five seconds. Turns it Deflect. Over. Yeah, he did turn it over. First one of the game. Clarion ball. They lead 9-5. A little bit of a ragged start for IUP. Kelly trying to penetrate. Gives it along the baseline. Kick it back outside for another three that comes off the, the front of the rim by Branch. No good. And IUP from right to left coming the other way. Tommy. Kicks it back out to the right wing three, and that goes down for the freshman, Bryce Radford. A nice job by Tommy there, getting into the middle of the defense and finding the guy on the perimeter. I think before uh, Radford's career is over, he's injury-free, he'll be up on that list of three ball. 9-8, Clarion, one-point lead. Lemon trying to penetrate the line, the lane in the paint, back outside along the right sideline to Kelly. Kelly trying to penetrate, but can't. And gives it back outside to Lemon. Lemon pops it from three ball territory. You can book it. They've got four trays for 12 points. Played almost four minutes of the game, and IUP trails 12-8. Getting right by his man, and all the way in for the easy layup is Armandi Foster, the All-American who is just a redshirt junior. What do you call that, Jack? The old what? Blue that's the you. that's blue by that's the Roy Orbison play <laughs> blue by you yeah some people like to call it uh, Linda Ronstadt but I'll stay with the old timer 12 <laughs> 10 in favor of Clarion they've got the ball and they dribble over to the left sideline to the left wing and another three oh ball and got another one and that's five trays in the game that one belonged to Jarman and we've got 15 39 and a timeout with the score Clarion 15 and IUP 10. And we are keeping it right here in the booth. No commercials, no rest. No commercial. <laughs> We're going to be hoarse by the end of the night, by the end of the day. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But what's that? <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> well, the engineer said if we want to break, let them know. No, nah, we're used to this. We need to, yeah. we need to talk a yeah, little we bit. We haven't talked about IEP basketball in a little over a year and a few days. So it's you know, this uh, with the five trays here by Clarion, it reminds me the first game with uh, Gannett that IUP lost 80-75. I looked at those stats. My goodness. I knew watching the game that Clarion, oh, they shot 53% from Treyland, and, and they had more than a handful of, of shots. So 
you know, they played one of their best games, and they're good. They were 9-3 and three going in. How difficult yeah. is that when you're only playing the – uh, a fistful of games, and the other team's got double figures. Right, yeah, you're, you know, IEP's walking to that game last Thursday. It's it's our first game. You know, these guys have been working hard on the court and everything. They had, a, a you know, some intra-squad stuff going on. But, boy, to go out and play a team that had played already, you know, double-figure games, that's just a tough one. And then, you know what, they came down here and they got that one back. So Exactly. The Clarion's starting here. I think they've made five threes. I think they are five for seven from three-point range. No, no official stats here today until halftime. Well, we've got um, Uzi in the game right now. Diop, number 21 in there. Back outside, the ball underneath, and a missed layup by Tommy D, but then he gets it back accidentally and lays it in. 15-12, Clarion, their ball, their lead. And IEP kind of staying close here by staying on the boards. They're up 7-1 on the boards. Foster went for the steal, didn't get it. Pull-up jumper from the right elbow is no good. And taken down by Rhodes. Rhodes across the dividing line from right to left. Lobs it over here to Foster. Armonte trying to penetrate in the paint. Slides the pivot foot. Traveling. Two turnovers for IUP. The uh, Crimson Hawks in two games are scoring 71 a game. They've given up 68. Of course, they gave up 80 in the first game. Here's substitution for Clarion. Kai Cooper comes into the game. He is a 6'9 freshman from Dortmund, Germany. That's a long way from Germany to Clarion. Dribble drive to the right, faked the pass, took the shot, no good, knocked out of bounds by uh, the aforementioned Cooper, and it's IUP ball. Substitution as Bryce Radford goes out, and Kyle Pulse is in the game. He is a freshman, 6'2", Pine Richland. They win a few games, that's for sure. I think this is his first appearance of the year. I, I think you're he right, is, yeah. yeah. He's not on the stats. Yeah. Diop with the ball right now. Uzi feeds it along the baseline. Ball is deflected, but Tommy gets it back. Tommy D fakes. He's along the baseline trying to back his way down. Comes across, fades from 10, back iron, no good. Rebound, Clarion, lead pass, left wing. Here's your three on its way. Branch, no good. And Diop comes down with a rebound. Over to Rhodes. Brings it four court. IUP trails 15 12. Toward the left corner, Tommy D with it. Demo Gerontis. Stop and go dribble, trying to make his way in. Feeds it in the right corner. And a travel called on Rhodes. Three turnovers. Well, the beautiful KCAC. They've had some things going on here. They had. Wrestling last weekend, wasn't it? Uh, last two weekends they had wrestling yeah. here. Uh, limited fans. I think they allowed uh, two uh, two tickets for each wrestler. Mm -hmm. And worked the ball outside. Clarion with Kelly giving it straight away to Makai Reynolds. Checked into the game. Now Kelly along the baseline. P picks up his dribble and feeds it outside. Feeding with a drive off the glass and good. By Jarman. Gerald Jarman. Well, that's their first two. Yep, and it's now 17-12 in favor of Clarion. Foster tried to feed. That's another turnover. They've got like three in a row, and it's yeah. four total. Over here on the wing, Reynolds shoots, and Reynolds hits a three. Man, oh, day. 20 to 12. Well, you know, we said they only have seven players. You only need five. That's you right. can play with fewer <laughs> if you want. In this, there's a steal. Another turnover. Lemon. Lemon goes in. He scores. He's fouled by Tommy D. A hoop and a harm. Five turnovers here. Yeah, and four in a row. Last one lead, leading to a breakaway layup and a three-point play potential. Two team fouls on IUP. And two on Clarion. That'll send uh, Lemon to the line. We're going to get uh, substitution here for IUP. And uh, Tommy's coming out of the game, Tommy D. Sullivan back in at the line. Lemon and good. He's shown some athleticism. He has nine points of the 23. 23-12. 11-point lead here for the Golden Eagles. Sullivan looking for cutters up top to Foster. And that ball just trickles over to Diop. Not a good pass. 
Diop trying to back his way down to 6'10 across the lane with a jump hook. Boy, that looked good. It went in. Twenty three fourteen Clarion they have the ball they have the lead Let's see IUP uh, stays in a man defense stop and go dribble almost losing it to the right elbow and back over to Reynolds on the wing low post pass Diop knocks it out of bounds Clarion keeps the ball with nine seconds on the shot clock substitution for Clarion Lemon coming out of the game and he is replaced by Mason Moraz. Two nice plays for the big guy down here on the offensive end and then getting around the offensive guy down here to knock that ball out of bounds. Exactly. Golden Eagles with the ball right now. Kelly feeds left wing. Here's a three ball shot. Oh my goodness, it went in. Moraz off the bench, knocks it down. 26-14, eight minutes gone in the first half and IUP down by 12. Foster drives the lane, blocked but fouled. And Armani will go to the line. That's going to be called on. I thought he said number 11, but there's no number 11 in there. Uh, I'm not really sure who that foul is against. We have a timeout with 11.59. And uh, when we come back, although we're not leaving, uh, Armani Foster will be at the line for IUP. Did you pick up who that foul was on? No, I did uh, not. Okay. Yeah, I thought the official had a uh, number, maybe it was Reynolds, a, a one. I thought I saw a one. Yeah, and the boards that uh, keep the fouls on the side of the scoreboard here, they're not operating those today, so we're no. a little bit in the dark. We'll give it to Reynolds for now. That would give Clarion three fouls and uh, IUP with two. I can tell you this, Clarion has seven threes, for that's 21 of their 26 points. And IUP has what, five turnovers? IUP has five turnovers. They had four in a row, and Clarion went on an 8-0 run during that time. I'll tell you a little bit about this Golden Eagles team. Uh, they are uh, averaging, I'm going to see from the three-point land what they're shooting. They're, they're shooting 32% from Trey. Whatever. They're averaging 75.7. They've given up 83.1. But you wouldn't know it by the Trey's headed down today. No, they've shot 180 coming in, so that's, what, 18 a game, and they've already shot, uh, I think, 10 here today. Mm -hmm. And we still have uh, 12 minutes to go in this first half. Jack Benedict, Tony Kakanya, wherever you may be, and we're glad to have you along. This is a game live from the beautiful KCAC where the IUP Crimson Hawks trail by 12. Armani Foster to the line, as we mentioned, he is – Averaging 17 and a half points a game, and he uh, lights that one up. Pulls out of the game, and Radford back in. Pulse departs for the bench, which is out of our view down below us here. Second shot is also good. Hawks are three for four from the line. They're down by 10, 26 16, as we roll a little bit under 12 minutes to go in the first half. Working the ball outside to Moraz. He gives it over to Jarman. Jarman double team. They try to trap on the sideline. Uh, ball juggled outside up top, but goes to Jarman. Jarman steps back, lets it flip. No good on the three ball. Rebound. Suleiman down to Foster. Stop and go dribble high off the window. Comes off. It won't go. Nice move, but did not finish. The other way. Stopping, popping, 12-footer. That's good. No, that's too easy. Seven points for Gerald Jarman out of Cedar Cliff, a freshman. They've got some young players here that look like they have some athleticism. And it is 28-16, Clarion underneath. The fake and the shot and good by Armani. Six points for Armani Foster. 28-18, the Clarion Golden Eagles coached by Damian Pitts. Reynolds feeds it to, over here to the right side. Branch with it. Work at perimeter. Left sideline. Coming back over is Reynolds. Reynolds stop and go dribble. Steps back. Takes an 18-footer that misses the rim. Hit the glass. Rebound. And in four court from right to left comes Foster. Oh, almost walked. Gives it up 
to Uzi, and then carrying, it. A carrying the ball is called. And a turnover, number six in the book for IUP. Yeah, it was just one of those hesitation and take a step and have the ball in your hand, and it's, uh, it's traveling. Tommy D coming back in. Suleiman departing. 28-18 Clarion. Reynolds with the ball on the near sideline on the dribble. Flips it underneath, man open, but blocked by Diop. And then we're going to get a floor foul. Um, Radford. Rice Radford. That's his second. Mm -hmm. And the third in the game here for IUP. Substitution, uh, Lawrence Lemon back in the game for Clarion. And Kai Cooper. Uh, who was fouled, departs. This was a non-shooting foul. Inbounding the ball to That's Lemon. That's backcourt. That's ba uh, yep. called a deflection. I guess, yeah. Stop and go dribble. In for the shot. High off the window. No good and altered by Diop. Rebound. Tommy D coming quickly. Left corner. Rhodes shoots. Misses. Rebound. Clarion's got it. They come the other way. And over to the left wing. And bring it back outside. Moving the ball nicely here against IUP. Straight up top it goes. 28-18, Clary in the lead. Retreating on the dribble is Jarman. Jarman looks for a pick. Still on the dribble and another foul. And I think that's Radford. Yep, that's his third. And that's, uh, you know, that's one of the tough things for a freshman coming into the college game, playing defense. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot different uh, with the high school game. And uh, the PSAC has produced a lot of great basketball over the years. Substitution. Radford and, stayed in. Yeah, Rhodes goes out. Diop deflected it out of bounds. So uh, Radford does stay in. And we're going to get uh, back in the game as Kyle Poles replacing Radford, who has the three fouls. Uzi Diop been very active in his time on the court here today. He's listed as 6'10". He looks like he's taller than that. And we're not even at floor level. Reynolds with a basketball, flips it toward the left corner. Down on the low block. Fades, Lemon shoots it, and he rolls it in. Baseline, fade away. That's just a nice shot. Not much you can do about that. 11 points for Lemon, 30 for Clarion. They lead by 12. Underneath, D, beautiful, and he... Knocks it down by dunking it. Foster with the assist. Uzi. Ozmani, I think, is the way he pronounces it. Now, here's a steal by Pulse, the kid from Pine Richland. Two on one to Foster. Layup good off the turnover. Is that Clarion's first turnover? Clarion's first turnover comes with about nine minutes to go in the first half. Armani has eight points, and the Hawks are within eight. 30 to 22, 840 counting. We're in the first half. Lemon with the ball outside, gives it uh, on a bounce pass. Working underneath the basket, back outside beyond the arc, and here's a three ball that won't go, and Uzi comes up with a rebound to Foster, Armandi around the perimeter. Stop and go dribble, trying to work it uh, to the corner to Tommy D with his three ball, had it up. Now they're starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, nice find by Armani. Yeah, he's getting, not only does he score but he's an all-around player. He'll give you a lot of assists the game. Under eight minutes to go, and the Hawks are within five. They were down by, what, 12? Yeah. Yeah. Here's a steal. Uh, still loose, and they're going to get it with Suleiman. Underneath, Tommy grabs it, puts it up. He scores. And Clarion sees what's coming. They call time. Seven points for Tommy D. And now Clarion turning it over a bit, and IUP is within three. The IEP got some stops, got some defensive rebounds. If you want to reach more customers, advertise your business affordably, increase sales, and grow your business, this message is for you. Hi, I'm Mark Burdick, Vice President and General Manager. At Renda Broadcasting, our marketing and digital team will take your advertising to new heights. Your business will soar with Renda Broadcasting and Digital. So if you're just getting your business off the ground or your existing business is sputtering, 
let our team go to work for you. Call Renda Broadcasting and Digital at 724-465-4700. individually and collectively. And we're, we're looking now, we're glad to see that there's some spring sports going on, uh, UP spring sports happening. Uh, spring football is supposed to start actually a week from today. You were up at the uh, South Campus to see the new, uh, the new turf field up there. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I was watching softball up there, the uh, doubleheader against Slippery Rock the other day. Yeah, the turf fields are just great. And what that's going to do sometimes, some of this, the universities that don't have the turf yet, that's going to bring IUP more home games. I mean, they won't be listed as home, but they'll be playing here. Yeah, and the thing with basketball, we don't know. Uh, we don't know what's, what's, what's coming next. There are no games on the schedule. Uh, I guess we'll find out uh, yeah. maybe when they happen. <laughs> <laughs> I like the maybe. <laughs> that's pretty much the way it is in the world now. Here's Lemon, another three, and it goes down. I tell you what, that kid is a player. Boy, oh, absolutely, and he uh, he's a uh, – Let's see, he's got three trays, two deuces, and one for one from the line. 33-27. Lawrence Lemon from the state of Illinois. He's coming off a double-double against Mount Aloysius. Here's Poles with the ball. Right side over Suleiman. Now back to the hoop is Tommy D. Flips it out here, and it's knocked away and stolen. Clarion picks it off. Oh, but that's push a push-off. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Good call down here by the official. The call is against Jarman. He used a stiff arm. That's one of the uh, the Gambridge officials. Brothers, of course, have officiated for quite some time. We have three officials. This is, this is a real game, folks. Porterfield up top with it. IUP trailing by six. Foster in the paint feeds along the baseline. It's juggled and lost. And Clarion brings it the other way. On a drive to the hoop and a reverse layup is good by Jarman. Jarman's in with nine. He's just a freshman. Clarion 35, IUP 27. Tommy D over toward the hash mark and inside the hash mark against Lemon. Back outside it goes. The lob to Porterfield. Backside, they flip the ball away. It's stolen. Nine turnovers. Nine turnovers. IUP right wing three. It's not going to go. Lemon rebounds, puts it in with a left hand. That's Clarion's first offensive rebound. I've got him with 16. 37 27. Clarion, six minutes to go, first half. Porterfield hands it off to Armati. Stops, pops, three ball, book it. I don't know. That might be a two. Uh, I think that's what they're. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're right. Well, I'm surprised I saw that from all the way up here. That was good, Tony. I'm glad. Uh, that's why I have you. <laughs> <laughs> Make me look good. Oh. I've got Armani in double figures here with ten. Yeah, that's is that right. right? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I have him with two, eight, four, but uh, I could have missed something along the way. It's 37-29. Clarion, 550 and counting. Yeah, I do have ten. Ten minutes. Uh, Looking to work, and they give it to Lemon against Porterfield. He starts to drive and then kicks it to the wing. Jarman going to back it up. He's had a good half. Shot clock winding down to eight. The shot, and it's good. Counted a three. Twelve points for Jarman. 40-29. They've got 40 points yeah, 40 already. 40 points. Still got five over five minutes to go. Long straightaway three ball. Won't go. Offensive rebound. Yes, on the putback by Tommy D. Foster missed it. Tommy put it in. He's in with nine. 40-31. Clarion. Five minutes and counting in the first half for the KCAC. Lemon outside with it now. What a half he's had. Fakes right. Goes left. Stops. Kicks it back out. To Jarman. Jarman will shoot it over and make it over Rhodes. He's got four trays. And they bump it back up to 43 31. IUP was within five. 
They were throwing within three, Jack. Within three. There you go. Uh, bad pass. Baseline pass. Ten turnovers. Yeah, you don't want double figures in that category. And I have uh, IEP with ten turnovers and Clarion with ten frees. 43-31. Coach Lombardi is uh, quietly talking with the official as they both come up court. Lemon with his back to the hoop. Feeds it over to the left to Moranz, who steps back and takes it and makes it. That's a two. Two or three, they still are hitting. We'll see what their shooting percentage is here in the, when we get to halftime stats. Eight points for Moranz, and it's a 14-point lead, 45-31. to 31. Tommy D with it right now. And a whistle. That's going to go against Clarion. Let's see what the number is here. I think it's on four. Yeah, it is. Had to hold on Porterfield down low. Case on Branch. Five team fouls, Clarion. He's given up four inches to uh, Ethan down there, so he just grabbed him. Kyle Cooper, young man at 6'9 from Germany back in the game. And Poles inbounding the ball to the right corner. Foster's cut off by two, three players. Oh, and a beautiful oh. pass. Tommy D cutting to the hoop. And he got it. Armandi, that's, that's what we said about, you know, assists. He's got at least three in the first half. Yeah, and a nice job by Tommy just diving into the bucket there. 45-33, Clarion. Golden Eagles with it. Kelly. Now IUP tries to trap. He's in trouble. Backdoor pass. There it is. Intercepted. Down the right sideline over to Armani. Foster dribbles between defenders, puts it up around the rim and in. And a hoop and a harm, and he'll go to the line. And the call is going to be against Jarman, his second. 12 points for Armani Foster. He will be at the line when play resumes. And we'll keep it right here in the broadcast booth with 3.31 to go in the half. And the Hawks are down by 10. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we don't have shooting. For really love the holidays at Graham Graham's. But it's tough to relax. <laughs> The dish guy heard us, said with the Dish Anywhere app, we could bring the comfort of our home TV along with us. Live TV, on demand, even our DVR shows. Feel good shows. <laughs> that put us right at ease, mostly. So many eyes. Take live TV, on demand, and your home DVR anywhere. Dish, tuned into you. Sure, they're going to be working on defending the three ball. Well, some of these, uh, the early ones down here, I thought came off a of dribble penetration. Guys were getting into the, the interior of their defense and finding guys on the perimeter. These last few are just guys just making individual plays, just stepping back and shooting them in your face. 16 points for senior Lawrence Lemon out of the state of Illinois. He's averaging 13.9 and almost seven rebounds a game. So this is just not a fluke game for him. He's a pretty good player. Yeah, and you know, the German kid, uh, a freshman from uh, uh, Cedar Cliff High School, he came in averaging 22 a game. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. And uh, he has uh, three trays in this game. And he's in with 15. Those two providing 31 of the 45 points. So we go with Armani Foster, the young man out of Meadville, to the foul line. IUP recruiting well in District 10 here as of recent times. Of course, uh, gone from last year, Malik Miller and uh, Chucky Humphreys. Shot no good off front of the rim, and Lemon comes out with a rebound. Under three and a half to go in the first half, and Gannon with a uh, uh, Clarion with a 10-point lead. Lemon with it now outside. Stops, picks up his dribble, needs help, and it's a bad pass, a bad bounce pass, and they turned it over, and the Hawks have the ball. Long, long three, Foster, no good. Knocked out of bounds by Rhodes. Clarion ball, they'll make a substitution. Makai Reynolds will check back into the game. That last one, I would like to have seen Armani just take one dribble, get himself set, and then take that shot. They take uh, Jarman out of the game. He has a couple of fouls, and Reynolds replaces him. Under three minutes to go, Clarion ball. They have a 10-point lead. Here's Kelly in the paint to the wing, out to 
Moraz, and now Lemon. Lemon feeds right corner to Reynolds. He pushes it up top. Penetration in the paint. Oop, almost a walk. Outside to Reynolds. Shot clock at six. Three ball from the left corner won't go. And it's taken down by Rhodes. Rhodes over to Armadi. Armadi lost his balance in the dribble, but he didn't give it up. Across the lane from left to right, turning, spinning, powering up with a shot, no good. Rebound, no good by Suleiman. Rebound, Moraz, and Clarion has it. Down to the wing it goes. Kelly with it right now. Over inside the hash mark on the left side, Reynolds. Reynolds on the bounce pass right side to Kelly. To the baseline, back outside. They work at perimeter, seven second shot clock. In the paint, ball is out of the hands. That was just bad hands that time by the young man from Germany, and they give it up. 145 to go in the first half. Hawks with the ball, they're down by 10, trying to get this thing into single digits. Poles over here. Porterfield and back to uh, Poles, the young man from Pine Richland swings it left to Porterfield. Porterfield, low post pass, goes awry, rolling on the court, and that's going to be a travel. Now it's time. Yep. They call it's a turnover IUP and then a travel by Clarion. He was skidding on the on the court. So double turnover. That's double turnover. 11 for IUP, 8 for Clarion now. And IUP ball. 20 seconds on the shot clock. They're on the opposite side of the court from where we are here. Up top it goes to Armani. Foster looking for cutters. Nobody open, releases to Porterfield. Ethan almost lost his dribble. Here's on the near sideline. He needs to release it. And they call a, an illegal pick? No, they call a timeout. I think. Oh, okay. And Yeah, we're down to four seconds. Yeah, I think um, Armani got that. Four seconds on the shot clock, 68 seconds remaining in the first half. Jack Benedict with Tony Cacagna. We're here at the KCAC. Ron Fidella, again the assistant, and Shamgod Wells of uh, Fairmont State. Fairmont State? No, yeah. West Liberty. Fairmont. Fairmont, Fairmont, yeah. Yep. I was watching the two the other night. Yeah, so was I. I was watching the yeah. game was on. Yeah. And uh, that was something because uh, I didn't watch the whole thing. And Fairmont had a big lead in the first half. And it ended up with a three-point lead. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that, that league, they just pour in points like you can't believe. But it would have been fun to play these teams. Oh, my goodness, that would have been fun. Oh, uh, well, meanwhile, I've got some good reading in. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, four seconds on the shot clock. The lob. Violation, five-second oh violation. Oh, my goodness. Coming out of a timeout. Yeah. 12 turnovers? Uh, yeah, and they just didn't, they didn't run anybody into the backcourt there. Here we go, 65 seconds and counting in the half. Clarion ball, 10-point lead for them. Steve Kelly with the basketball, gives it up to Moraz and over to Reynolds, outside the hash mark. Straight up to Jarman. Jarman trying to get a pick from Lemon. Jarman lets it rip. A oh, long splash. Whew, three ball on its way, and down it goes. Well, you can see why he's averaging 22 a game. He's, can we respond with Foster? No, rebound. Poles missed it. It rolled off the rim. No good. 30 seconds and counting. It's 48-35, Clarion. 18 points for Jarman. Out of Cedar Cliff. And they're counting it down here to play for a shot. There's about a one second differential with the big clock and the little clock. Now we're down to six seconds. Jarman, they come out to, he stops, he floats, he shoots, he misses, rebound, blocked. Half is over. Shot clock. No, it isn't. Yeah, they're, they're shot clock violation. Yeah, it's .7. So well, they should put a little bit back on. They're going to put one yeah. point something on here. Okay. 48-35, Clarion. And they're going to put something up. They do. 1.5 seconds to go the length of the court. 
into Foster. Three-quarter court, shoots it and, oh, almost banked it in. <laughs> you know, when he let that go, I, I just had this vision of uh, Ashton Smith during the NCAA oh. tournament over at the field house hitting, hitting that 70-footer right before halftime. Yeah, it brings back uh, a lot of good memories here of, of great players in IUP history. So uh, we're going to total up the book, and uh, we'll get additional stats from uh, down below from our sports information director at IUP and Ryan Rebholz. IUP uh, trails in the game. Uh, by a score of uh, 48 to uh, 35, the uh, hot shooting.
And welcome back, everybody, to the KCAC. Jack Benedict along with Tony Cacagna. And we've got about uh, five and a half minutes to go before the second half of this game between IUP and Clarion resumes. Clarion dominating. They lead 48-35 to 35 in this game. And they have been lights out from the field and from three-ball territory. We've got some statistics we're going to pass along here. Uh, Tony, you want me to run them down? You want to run them down? Oh, I can go through them here. Okay. If turn the lights on, we'll be good. Yeah, but, I'm uh, trying to see. <laughs> uh, and we're looking at stats off our phone. It, it, it's, uh, well, anyway, uh, Clarion shot 58% there in the first half. 18 for 31, put up 48 points against IEP. 11 for 18 from three. Uh, ended up with uh, eight turnovers, uh, and IEP led to rebounding. One thing they did do well, they led to rebounding 18 to 11, but IEP in with uh, a dozen turnovers, and IEP shot it well, uh, 50%, 15 for 30, just two for seven from three, though, and those turnovers, those turnovers are just lost possessions, and then Clarion took advantage of that. That's when they broke this game open a little bit. They had an 8-0 run there when they were turning IEP over. And IUP three for five from the line. Clarion one for one. Uh, can you, you want to give the individual stats? You want no, me to you, do you, you can okay. do those if you want to because okay. I would have to scroll all over my No, I'll here. go through with my old time. Uh, it's pretty interesting here, my scorebook. Uh, for some strange reason, about a week ago, I went in and I pulled it out and I, I found my lineups here, you, as you'll notice here, from last year. <laughs> from the women and men's game, ready for the regional. Names and everything in for both teams. Yeah, and I remember we were talking about that the other night. Never you had it in your scorebook, and <laughs> I was sitting in the office working on a full-page preview for the for the thing. And, uh, and uh, I mean, we put it in the paper in the next day, but that's the day we found out. Never happened. All right, here's what happened in the first half. IUP being led by Armani Foster. Armani's in with 12 points here in the first half. He's got five trays and two for two from the line. Ethan Porterfield has two buckets for four points. Tommy Demo Gerontis, 11 points on four deuces and a tray. Uh, we have uh, Tomawa Suleiman is in with a point, one for two from the line. Bryce Radford playing with three personal fouls. He has a tray for three. And Uzi Diop, a couple of deuces for four points. And IUP, as Tony mentioned, shooting 50% from the field. 12 turnovers, 35 points in uh, the first half. 15 field goals. Clarion with 18 field goals, 11 for 18 from Trey Land, 58%, one for one from the line. Kaysen Branch is in with a tray. The points coming from Gerald Jarman, freshman from Cedar Cliff, with 18 points in the first half, and that includes four trays. Lawrence Lemon, the 6'7 senior from the state of Illinois, coming off a double-double in the game the other day against Mount Aloysius. He's in with 16 points on three trays and three deuces and uh, one for one from the line. So uh, two players there, 34 points out of the 48 for Clarion. Mason Moraz has two trays and a deuce for eight, and uh, Makai Reynolds has a tray for three points. I have Clarion with eight turnovers. Is that what you have? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, Okay. So the second half will be coming up here of uh, this game from the beautiful KCAC. And eventually we're going to see entertainment here, and we'll be seeing more sports here, and things will loosen up a little bit, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's really been like nobody has ever seen what's happened here in 2020. No, it's just, you know, you just never imagined uh, you would see something like this in this country. And we're, you know, over a year into it now. And, you know, I'm still a little bit shocked sometimes when I see people walking around wearing their masks. And sometimes I forget mine and you know, got to go back. I did today. I forgot <laughs> I to go back to the car and get my mask. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a little bit of a different world right now. And hopefully, you know, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. I know, you know, people are getting their vaccinations now. You've gotten yours. I'm waiting on mine. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully we break out of this pretty soon. Yeah, we hope so. And as I said, uh, you can get an opportunity. Uh, we've had some pretty good weather here. If you have an opportunity, go see the baseball and softball teams uh, up there at the South Campus. Beautiful new turf up there. And opportunity to see those teams in action. Um, every, everything counts, all the spring sports counting. And uh, the football teams in the conference are doing it in different ways. Uh, uh, 
And from what I understand with IUP, they'll run their normal spring practices three days a week, beginning uh, tentatively for next Friday. And basketball, this this counts. These games, th these points, and this team trailing, IUP trailing by, uh, well, we haven't said that at this place for a long time, have we? No, and IUP is, uh, IUP's never led in this game today. Claren came out and hit right. that first three and then hit ten more after that, and it's uh – it's been a rough afternoon for IEP's defense. They got to get out here and defend the perimeter a little bit. Uh, you know, it's a lot of dribble penetration. You know, some guy, these guys, you know, for the first half, Clarion made some shots that were just good individual plays. But at the start of the first half there, I thought they just did a really good job of getting into IEP's defense and breaking it down and, and finding guys on the perimeter and knocking down threes. IEP, I, I would like to see them go into uh, Ethan Porterfield a little bit more, establish that inside game, play some inside out. Tommy D, Foster, Porterfield, uh, Dave Morris. Uh, he didn't play the we first seen half. Him today, yeah, no. he's, he's he's in there now. Hmm. My goodness, forgot all about him. Interesting. My goodness, how could we do that? Well, I'm certainly out of practice. All right, here we go. IUP has the ball first, moving left to right as we watch it. Porterfield with a ball, giving it over to Dave. Morris working the point now. The lob under the Porterfield, off the fingertips, out of bounds, turnover number 13. Ooh. Clarion coming forecourt with it now, and uh, now inbound the ball with Mason Moraz. Give it over to Steve Kelly. The point guard brings it up against Morris. Against the man to man. That's off the knee and out of bounds, and a turnover for Clarion. Jarman couldn't hold on to it. Tried to short hop it. Yeah, IEP needs to string together some stops here at the start of this half and uh, get back into this game. Exactly. Foster gives it up top and gives it right back to Armand. He comes to the baseline right. Feeds in the paint. Layup good by Porterfield. Nice feed. I don't know how many assists Armand had in the first half, but he got at least four not with that one that he got, and it is now a 48-37 game. Clarion lead, Clarion ball. Kelly with the ball. Kelly being hounded by Morris, really coming out on him. Kelly dribbling all over the place, feeds it in the corner to Moraz. Moraz in the left corner with a shot on its way. That's an air ball into the hands of Morris. Zips it down the left sideline to Armani. In the paint on a drive, banks it, no good. Tip, yes, Porterfield. Well, Tony, you wanted him to show up. He has two hoops here. Yeah, I thought the first possession there, I thought he was that pass that came over the top, I thought he was a little slow to react to it. He got caught a little bit flat-footed, but uh, made two nice plays here the last two possessions. 48-39 now, IUP within nine. Moraz gives it over to Kelly. Kelly stops medium post and back outside to Jarman. Jarman goes baseline, up off the glass, in and out. Porterfield with a rebound. Ethan taking over both ways here. Shoot him in. Out to Morris. Morris at the point. Lobs it underneath. Threw it away. Out of bounds it goes for turnover number 14. Yeah, the first time the, the play was there when Ethan was under the basket. But that time it just wasn't there. 48-39 in favor of Clarion. Almost two minutes gone in the second half. Jack Benedict and Tony Cacagna here with IUP basketball from the KCAC. And they'll uh, give it up over here to Kaysom Branch. Now Jarman, Jarman dribbles the baseline, kicks it back outside. Retreating on the dribble. Trying to penetrate and go all the way for a score. Block, no two for you on that one, but Lemon gets it. Feeds it out for a three ball, and that does go down for Mason Moraz. Well, they hung in there. That is field goal number 12 from beyond the arc. 51-39, Clarion. Porterfield. Oh, now the Foster will get a foul as Armani was on his way to the hoop. They're going to say this is on the floor, I do believe. Yep. And that is on. Um, Armani standing the line. I thought. I thought that's a mm. shooting foul, but they're calling it on the floor, and it's going to be IEP's ball under the basket. Yeah, he was going to the line. I'm not sure who the foul was on. Uh, first one of the second half by either team. As we mentioned, there's no PA announcer, and so we have to rely. Uh, now the uh, 
two officials of the three are conferring. Foul was on 14, Jack. 14. That's uh, Lemon. That's I've got him for first. 51-39. IUP trails. They inbound the ball in the left corner to Armonte. Baseline in the paint. Porterfield five footer. Oh, it rolls off. Rebound by Dave Morris, and they're going to count it. Good. Dave didn't play in the first half. I didn't see him, did you? No, he wasn't in. No. 51-41, IUP down by 10. Loose ball. Tommy knocks it away, and then a foul. Well, first Moraz gave it up, and then he tried to get it, the ball back, and he committed a foul. Well, smart foul because IUP's taking that the other way for yeah. maybe a dunk. That would have been long gone. So uh, near midcourt, Tommy D inbounds the ball as we've played three minutes of the second half. And the Golden Eagles lead it by 10, 51-31. Porterfield to Morris. Dave swings left wing on its way. Foster, no good. Lemon rebounds. Outlet pass comes for court to Kelly. Kelly gives it to Moraz. He lets go with a three, and it's good. Four trays in the game for Mason Moraz. And IUP coming back, and Morris tries to answer, but it comes off the rim, but no good. 54-41, Clarion. Well, you figure they got to cool off at some point. You would think. Right now, it hasn't happened. Out to Jarman. Jarman getting it, running right-hander. It's good from about eight feet. He's in with 20 points. He averages 21, and it's a 15-point lead. 56 to 41. Four minutes gone in the second half. Armani at the point. Stop and go dribble in the corner. Tommy D shot is good. That's a tray. Assist to Armani there. That's his fifth. Five assists for Armani. 14 points for Tommy D. And the Golden Eagles with a 12-point lead with the ball. They work it over to Moraz, who gives Kelly. Kelly looking for cutters. And away from the ball, we're going to get a foul on IUP on a hold. It's on uh, Armani. First one on Foster. Media timeout. Media timeout. That's us, and uh, we'll don't have we don't take timeouts today. We we just sit and talk. <laughs> Fifteen thirty-four to go in the game. Clarion leads fifty-six to forty-four. Clarion has committed two fouls in the second half. IUP won. Clarion has hit 13 trays in this game. Yeah, 39 of their hits. If you want to reach more customers, advertise your business affordably, increase sales, and grow your business, this message is for you. Hi, I'm Mark Burdick, Vice President and General Manager. At Renda Broadcasting, our marketing and digital team will take your advertising to new heights. Your business will soar with Renda Broadcasting and Digital. So if you're just getting your business off the ground or your existing business is sputtering, let our team go to work for you. Call Renda Broadcasting and Digital at 724-465-4700. Well, Lemon, Mraz, and uh, uh, Jarman. I think th they have all the field goals for Clarion except for two. Um, Reynolds right? has a tray, and so does Branch. Yeah, so yeah, they have that's all their it. points those are the except two. for those six. Yeah. All right, we're going to resume now at the 1534 mark in the second half. And the Clarion will put the ball in play with Case and Branch. Played his high school ball at Highlands High School. Inbounding against IUP's man-to-man. -man. 20 seconds on the shot clock, and they get it in to Jarman. Jarman being hounded by the much bigger. Porterfield fades, takes an 18-footer. Back rim, no good. Lemon tips it back out, and they get a new set of uh, seconds here. Back to Jarman. Kelly, baseline, in the paint to Lemon. Lemon turns, spins, put it in. He was contested on the play but still scores his 18th point. 58-44 in favor 
of the Golden Eagles. Foster gives it up to Porterfield. Porterfield with a backdoor pass intended for Dave Morris, but that went nowhere except out of bounds and becomes the 15th turnover in the game for IUP. I'm not sure what anybody was doing on that uh, exchange. Uh, Dave Morris not looking for the ball and uh, just, uh, just an ill-advised pass by a forward 6'8 guy out on the perimeter. Morris coming out, putting pressure on Kelly. Clarion wanted a foul on Dave. Here's Kelly still dribbling. Back outside it goes in the paint. In and out, right corner, Jarman three, in and out. Rebound by Kyle Poles of IUP to Armandi. Foster driving down the lane and is tripped up, they say. Clarion coach Damian Pitts thought uh, that Armandi just lost his balance. I think they call it, I'm not sure who they called it on. Is a shooting foul. Yep. Armani's two for two from the line. Or two, I'm sorry, two for three from the line. 12 points here in the first half. Pitt's longtime assistant at Millersville, coming off a head coaching job at Centenary and taking over the Clarion program as Foster misses the free throw. Branch goes out, and checking in is Kai Cooper. They get a lot of height uh, in, in that exchange. He's 6'9". Through the air and through the hoop. 13 for Foster. 13-point lead for Clarion. Steve Kelly brings the ball for court over to Lawrence Lemon. Against the man-to-man. -man. Back outside to Jarman. To Kelly. Kelly on the dribble on the right sideline being crowded by Tommy D and being fouled by Tommy D. His second. And IUP's second. Yeah, Tommy played the old uh, knee defense there where <laughs> he stick out the knee to stop the guy. 14 minutes and counting in the game. And the Golden Eagles lead it by 13. They have the ball. Kelly trying to back his way down. He's in the paint. Turns and spins, rejected in there. Diop got that. Yep, Uzi got it. Back outside to Morris, fakes the line, the lane, the drive, and he's fouled. And it's going to be on Cooper. Dave Morris, who did not see action in the first half, to the line. He's averaging nine a game. Transferred a couple years ago from Tennessee State. Great player uh, in Erie, the all-time leading scorer in uh, high school ball. It really started to get the, get the grasp of things as uh, the season went on last year. I thought uh, late in the season, just a really solid point guard for him. He hits it, 58-46. Tommy D goes out. Shulaman comes in. And Dave will get another shot. There it is. And the dip and flip, it's good. Four points for Morris. Hawks trail by 11. Dave putting one-on-one -on -one pressure on Kelly, who brings the ball four court. Bounce pass over to Lemon. Lemon gives it out to Jarman. They went for a steal, didn't get it. Jarman goes in, puts it up, off the rim, no good. Offensive rebound, Moraz into Jarman. Jarman weaves his way through and lays it up with a left hand. He's getting whatever he wants. Boy. And now, you know, you, you got you to gotta stop there, but you didn't finish it off with the rebound. 22 points for Gerald Jarman out of Cedar Cliff, a freshman. Suleiman driving down the lane with a left hand. Count it, and he's fouled on a hoop in the arm. How about the big guy putting the ball on the floor there? From nice. The top of the key. 60-49 now. And he'll try to top it off here and complete the three-point play. 13-10 to go in the game. Well, he, he's a good-looking player. I mean, he's, he's got some size. He's uh, got, you can tell he's got some strength. It looks like he's going to be a really good rebounder, too. Kid out of uh, London, England. 60-50. Clarion by 10. Seven minutes have elapsed here in... The second half on the left sideline is Jarman with a basketball. 
Jarman now picked up. They trap him on the sideline, and he knocks the ball off the knee of Armani Foster. Clarion ball. Mason Moraz will be putting it in play. We're going to see uh, Bryce Radford back in in a moment, and ball knocked out of bounds. They're going to say that Clarion retains possession. Well, nice play by Dave Morris. <laughs> Heads up play too, knocking it in bounds, or you know, trying to keep it in bounds before he stepped on the sideline. Coach Lombardi down below and just watching the action with the mask on. Out of Lemon. Lemon still on the dribble. Now in the paint, and they call a foul on IUP. That's on uh, Suleiman. That'll be his first. And the Hawks have committed three here in the second half. 12.49 in the, the ball game in regulation. Mason Moraz to put it in play. He gets it into Lemon. Left bounce. foot, yep, left foot out of bounds. Even this far away, we could see that. It's the 11th turnover on Clarion, three this half. And changes for the Crimson Hawks. Uh, Bryce Radford is in the game. And uh, Poles goes out. 60-50, a chance to get it here. The Clarion with the lead. Uzi with the ball, handing it off to Dave Morris at the point. Gives it on the wraparound into Foster in the paint. Baseline pass, beautifully. Uzi puts it in, and he's fouled on the play. That's a beautiful feed. It's just a really nice play, and you could see IEP set it up, and you could just see it coming, and uh, you know Uzi finishes it off there with a nice cut to the basket. Nice find by Armani. That fouls on Cooper. Armani's up around five or six assists now. And IUP, little by little now, making its way in, 60-52. Through the air, back rim, no good. Offensive rebound, Suleiman. Back outside, Foster lights it up. There they go, splash. Five-point possession. Yep. 16 for Armani. Clarion calls time. And this is the closest IUP has been in a long, long time, 60-55. Yeah, they had it the 30-27 there uh, about the, uh, a little bit, eight, seven, eight minutes to go in the first half. Now they got it down to five. Clarion calling the timeout at the 12-20 mark. And it's now a 60-55 game and a lot of momentum now for the, the Crimson Hawks. And uh, the... Uh, Pretty much IUP has been, I think I'm just watching the coaching staff where we could see this taking it in stride, you know, little by little. It's one of those catch-up games. There have been so many of those this past week in the different tournaments. Oh, my goodness. I, I turned the Penn State game off when they were way back, and yeah. they lost by one. Yeah. yeah I was uh, watching Gonzaga the other night, you know, number one team in the country. They got down double figures uh, in their championship game, and or I think that was the semifinal. Mm -hmm. They came back and won that game. Well, it's really interesting, as we said, because no Duke this year, no Kentucky, uh, and then we've got some schools like who is it, Virginia with COVID, and uh, somebody else just bowed out. Uh you know, it's it's just different. Everything is just totally different. And uh, as we said, this is not a, it feels like a scrimmage in a way. But it is a game. And yeah. it's it's a countable game. Yeah, and it's got to be, you know, it's got to be tough for these guys. Because, you know, I know it's part of their scholarship. You're here, you're on a scholarship, play basketball. It's got to be tough, though, to just practice every day, every day, every day, and, you know, not see anything coming down the road. No excitement. You know, what what keeps you going? It's not that game on Wednesday and Saturday. Yeah, what keeps us going? <laughs> 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 Same deal. You know, the whole routine is broken. All right, here we go now. So uh, IUP is going to uh, go full court press here as they're making their move. They're down by five. And Clarion inbounding the ball now. Crimson Hawks will back off. As down the right sideline on a leisurely dribble is Jarman. Jarman's had a big game here. Goes to the foul line, gives it outside with a driving shot, and they're going to call a foul on Uzi Diop on the dribble drive. He is in with his uh, first foul. Twelve forty-nine. 
12.07 to go. Sending to the line, Kaysen Branch. Two shots. And no good. Too long. As we mentioned, played at Highlands High School. He's a redshirt sophomore. Listed as 6-4. Second shot is coming. Here it is. And it's good. One out of two. They've only been to the line three times. And putting double teaming on the sideline. There's a foul. As Radford is fouled. And that'll go on Branch. And that will be his third. 61-55 with exactly 12 minutes remaining in the game. And that's Is that the seventh team? We're going to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. At seven. After the media timeout. Yeah. Um, yeah, media timeout coming exactly at the 12-minute mark. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I think I, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm, I missed one or two here, uh, as we mentioned, making excuses for myself. But <laughs> <laughs> see down below with uh, the hand signals by the officials to the scorer's table. And you've got uh, four people spread apart at the scorer's table. No PA, no fans. And those of us up here at the second level, right yeah, passing uh, the game. I see one person down there in the stands, uh, over there in the corner. But uh, oh yes, yeah. There's uh, maybe they'll put that down as the attendance today will be one. <laughs> Set all kind of records this year, huh? Coach Wells down there. Checking with one of the officials about a certain play. Well, I don't think they were real thrilled about that last foul down here. Right down below us. Went to the line, and uh, you know, I don't know. I think that's maybe you just kind of let guys play through that one. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to call it there, then there are probably other places you can call that, make that call. Jack Benedict, along with Tony Kakanya, we hope you're enjoying the broadcast here today as we uh, send it around the world. IUP and Clarion, PSAC. Some teams playing uh, games 10 or more. Others not playing at all. Some playing a few. It's been that kind of a year. So uh, coming up now. And IUP trailing it by six. And Radford will be at the line. Bryce is at the line here with a uh, tray today. He missed it. Rebound coming off. Clarion's got him. Kelly. Kelly with the ball. Kelly, medium post, kicks it back out to Lemon. Lemon drives the line, the lane, the left hand layup is good. Didn't even use glass. He's in with 20 points. Double dribble is called on IUP on Morris on the far sideline. 63 55. Clarion, that's 16 turnovers? 16, and every time I, he's been right there, you know, breathing on him a little bit, uh, they turn it over. Yeah, Jarman with it right now, working on the dribble. Steps back and shoots, and <laughs> no, they're going to call the foul. It is on Dave Morse. Number one on Dave. I've got IUP with five in the second half. This is a two-shot foul. Jarman, he's just a handful to cover. He is. He, he is. is. To defend. We're going to watch him for the next three years, or maybe more. <laughs> Who knows? We were talking. That free throw is good. About uh, how many years eligibility with this NCAA rule? How many? How many years these players can student athletes can stick around? He made both free throws, and he's in with 24 points, and it's back up. Back up to 10. Had it down Dou to five. Double digits. 65-55. Arbonne yo-yoing the ball outside, gives it over to Diop. Uzi to Foster. Foster trying to back his way down. He's on the baseline, knocked it off the defender and out of bounds, saving Grace there. 13 seconds on the shot clock. And uh, Bryce Radford will put the ball in play. And, and uh, against the man-to-man, -man, lobs it back out beyond the arc, and Foster will let it rip off the front rim, no good. Offensive rebound by Uzi back out to Radford. He's open. Three balls. Why? Wow. Well, I tell you what, that is a nice pass off the offensive rebound because he's he's rebounds that on the left side of the basket. Finds the guy all the way out here on the left, uh, the right wing. Nice play. 
seven-point deficit under 11 to go, 65-58 Clarion. They've led from the outset. Try to hang on, IUP trying to make a move, reaching foul, Dave Morris, his second and number six on IUP. Tommy coming back in the game, Tommy D. Suleiman going out, Mason Moraz on the far sideline near the hash mark to put the ball in play to Jarman. He's above his average now, averaging 21. He's got 24. Jarman dribbling all over the place, trying to get around Morris. Can't happen. Picks up his dribble, needs help. And they're counting. And a steal on the pass. Armani, breakaway. Then he loses it. Out of bounds. Who hit it last? Clarion, IUP ball. Kind of ragged action there. 10.31 remaining. 27 seconds on the shot clock with uh, 10.31 to go as Radford inbounding out to Tommy D. Handing it off to Dave Morris. Dave trying to get a pick from D off to the baseline, off balance shot from the baseline right, no good. Clarion rebound. And they'll bring it right to left down the right sideline with Lawrence Lemon. Lemon working against Tommy D. Fees it to Moraz. Back out to Kelly. Kelly down low, and he backed his way down, and he commits an offensive foul. As Radford goes skidding on the court. <laughs> I'm surprised he got up. We could hear him up here <laughs> when he got knocked down. <laughs> of course, the place is empty. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let's see. Uh, Reynolds is coming in, and um, Cooper going out. Hawks ball, they trail by seven. Ten minutes and counting in the game. They can dig in a little deeper now. Here comes Armani toward the hoop. Layup counted, and he's fouled. His dribble drive to the hole with a left-hand layup, and he's fouled on the play on the hoop of the harm. And to the line, he will go. Really a pleasure to watch this guy play. 18 points. And he's just not getting the roll from the line today, though. The Hawks have missed sitting. six free throws in the game. He is sitting here with a five-point deficit again, and there's a turnover. There's a turnover. Here's Dave Morris behind the back on the dribble. The uh, lob, and Diop slips and goes out of bounds, and they turned it over. Just, just not patient enough on that particular play. No, tried to make a... You know, just make the easy play there. Just make a nice little bounce pass, and you had two guys going to the bucket. Be a little bit more patient. 65-60, Clarion. Nine and a half to go. Clarion ball. Lemon. Lemon trying to work against Uzi, and he puts it up over the six tender, but he missed it. And Moraz fading away, puts it in for two. 16 for Moraz. IUP comes back. Tommy D. Three ball. No good. Rebound. That'll be a swiping foul on Lemon, who fouled Uzi on a putback attempt. Two fouls on Lemon. Uzi has six points today. He's 0 for 1 from the foul line. Hawks are down by seven. This has really been a struggle here today to play catch up, that's good. 67-61, Coach Lombardi uh, talking with this young guard down here in uh, Radford as he comes off. And Suleiman is back in, second one no good. Oh, look at that, <laughs> that's a globetrotter type move by Lemon was on his, uh, on his butt dribbling the ball, trying to stay alive, and he did keep it alive. And Lawrence Lemon is with it right now. The Hawks have missed free throws. Under nine minutes to go, and they're down by six. Here's Kelly in the paint. Back outside to Jarman. Jarman, pull-up jumper, and too long, no good. Rebound, Hawks, Foster, Armandi, the other way to the foul line, dribbles to the right, and he'll bring it back out. Trying to get a pick from Uzi. That's 6'10". That's a big pick. 
15 seconds on the shot clock on the baseline. Pass underneath. Suleiman, yes. Another assist for Amani Foster. And Suleiman. Got it down to four. Need a stop. Yep. 67-63. Lemon on the move. Puts it up with a left hand. No good. Tommy D goes f- skidding on the floor. Here comes uh, Morris. Morris off balance. Up and no good. Partially deflected. Moraz has the rebound to Reynolds in four court. I just did not like that possession. Let guys get set, run your offense. Under eight minutes to go now in the game. And the Hawks trail by four. Need a big stop here. Moraz, 30 feet away, gives right sideline to Reynolds. One dribble to Lemon. Lemon comes to the left side, fades away with a 20-footer. No good. Uncontested rebound. Sue Lyman has it. Foster, he looks, he takes the three, no good, in and out. Lemon rebounds. Well, he had the look. Yeah, it would have made it a one-point game. So Clarion with the ball as they get instructions from their head coach over here, Damian Pitts. They're working from the foul line on out. Ball knocked away, and then uh, Foster almost... Almost stole the ball here. They really turned it up to deep. Morris swipes it from behind, knocks it away. Tommy D, three on one, gives it to Morris. Too far under the hoop, and he tried to reverse layup. No good. Down to Lemon. Lemon's going to put it up and score. Oh, my goodness. Who we got down there? There's a timeout here. Yeah. Dave Morris. Uh, Yeah. Coach Joe was not happy with that. Look like with Dave getting pretty far under the hoop. They helped him up. Rob Barron, the trainer, is out. Well, IEP just missed uh, some golden opportunities there coming down. And uh, just I thought just a little bit impatient. I just didn't run their offense. They trail 69-63. 6.47 remaining. Tommy D back in the game. And uh, Dave comes out. Getting a breather. Looks like he's okay. Ethan Porterfield returns to the lineup. And uh, Poles is also in there. Kyle Poles for IUP. Foster. Well, a bounce pass to Sue Lyman. Looks back door. Nobody opened. Porterfield down to Foster. In the paint, fade away from six. High off the window. No good. Lemon rebounds. They zip it down quickly to Jarman in with a left-hand layup, and he scores. He doesn't waste any time moving up and down the court. Back up to eight, 71-63, and there's a careless turnover, and Jarman forced it, and IUP turns it over, and we've got a timeout. 6.17 to go. Opportunities, missed opportunities here. Tony. Yeah, had it down to four, and I thought had some real nice opportunities. Came down once off a turnover, didn't get anything out of it. Uh, just impatient on the next possession. Come down and transition again. You get too far into the basket, you end up taking a bad shot. And then you turn it over again. Trailing 71 to 63. Clarion with, uh, let's see, seven players dressed today. I'm trying to check my book. Yeah, seven players dressed. And they lead by eight. They've committed ten fouls. And IUP's committed six in the second half. Before nobody. (laughs) Yeah. IUP's outscored them here, what, 33-23 in the second half. Gave up, uh, what, 48 in the first half that was 48 35 and i've given up 23 here in a second so doing a better job defensively in the second half just some just some impatient offensive possessions i thought i have them with six turnovers second half 18 overall what do you have Tom? that's what i have 18 okay and, uh, 15 for clarion so clarion at eight in the first half they have seven here in the second mm-hmm. i know this this will end clarion season they're four and six uh we haven't been told i don't know if iup it's going to try to play another game or not. There was some talk about it, maybe, but uh, we'll see. Well, if I'm a Mercyhurst or a Gannon or you know somebody that's trying to make the tournament, yeah, you know, I want to, I want a game against a good opponent. Yes. 
And uh, today, Clarion's been a very good opponent. Here is Lawrence Lemon coming into four court on the dribble. He's still working it. Gives it over to Jarman. Two leading scorers today. Jarman steps back, shoots it, and he goes down. There was a little bit of contact with Morris. No foul. He missed a shot. Foster brings it for court. Almonte flips it out to Tommy D. Drives down the lane and goes in and fouled. And it's going to be on Reynolds. Two shots coming up. In fact, all, all the shots at the line will be two. We're, we're beyond ten here. This yeah. is a shooting, a uh, foul in the act of. Clarion will be in the one and one on IP's next foul. Got to make some free throws here. Transfer from Northern Illinois. He had uh, what, ACL surgery, right? Yeah. And then a knee after four games last uh, season. He missed that shot. He's in with 14 points here, but, boy, the missed free throws are really hurting. And he missed that one in and out. And Clarion gets it. Clarion ball. Clarion leads. Eight points. Reynolds coming down. Reynolds shoots it up and over Porterfield. It won't go. Down to Morris, four court. Dave holds it up. Dave back over his shoulder. Porterfield shoots three ball count. That's the first shot he's taken in a long time. Yes, the uh, start of the second half there. He had the first two buckets and then nothing since. Ethan Porterfield with 11 points. Hawks are within five, 71-66. Here's Kelly with his back to the hoop, bringing it back out with five minutes to go in regulation. Works his way in the paint. Gives it on the right wing over to Lemon. He'll shoot. No, it's rejected. No two for you. Suleiman with the block. Morris in traffic coming out and almost lost control of the ball there. And now Dave will back it up. Dave Morris still yo-yoing the ball. He's going to take a three, but it's partially tipped. And Clarion's got it with a three on two. Right down the boulevard, all his way for the driving layup. Jarman missed the shot. Morris flips it out on the wing to Armani Foster. The line, the lane, the drive. And no, he just missed it. But he will be at the line for two shots with 4.27 to go. And the foul is going to be called on... Mm -hmm -hmm. I think it was on Moraz, but I'm not sure. I must apologize. But Yeah, it's tough to tell up here. And yeah, very tough, and, and no uh, PA man. To, no PA. Armani knocks that down. So that's a good. four-point game, chance to make it a three-point game. Tommy D comes out of the game, pulls back in, and the second one is good. Armani hits them both. He now has 20 points, and the Hawks are within three again. 71 to 68, 422 to go, hustling, knocking it out of bounds. Dave Morris has really been stepping up play defensively. Yeah, he struggled a little bit down here on the offensive end. I thought he's been a little bit impatient with things. I yeah. didn't like that last three shot. 22 seconds of the shot clock. Clarion gets the ball. Kelly gives on a bounce pass to Jarman. And the guys on the bench echoing defense down below. Ten seconds on the shot clock. German shoots. No good. Comes down short. Foster with a rebound. Here comes Armani. Armani turns, spins in the lane, layup. Oh, short. He goes down. No foul. Rebound. Clarion. Two on one to Jarman. Jarman goes in for the shot. Rejected. But the putback is good by, I think it was Lemon, wasn't it? No, it wasn't Lemon. Was it Reynolds? Uh, the uh, it might have been Moraz. Moraz. We'll give it to Moraz. Yeah, I was looking. It was on a trailer that came by. 73 to 68. Hawks are again down by five. Three and a half to go. On the left wing, Armadi. Foster. Lost control of the dribble, and it's out of bounds. Clarion ball. 323 to go. Same deal. Got Every close. time they've been right there, there's been a, a bad play or you know a bad shot or something. Down by five, 73-68 with 
3.23 to go in the game. The uh, Golden Eagles coming in here with seven players and uh, playing hard all the way, giving IUP all they could handle. Uh, the three ball, let's see, they've only had uh, after, they've had two in the second half after they hit 11 in the first half. Yeah, and IEP, as I thought, has done a good job of you know, taking away the three. Um, boy, just uh, just a careless play here and there. This mm -hmm. Just kind of keeping them, you know, nice to see if they could get, tie this game or, or get up one, you know, how Clarion going to react to it, but they just haven't been able to do it. 20 points for Foster in the game, leading the way, but nobody else. Let's see, uh, the only other player in double figures is Tommy D. He has 14. Hawks have missed six free throws in the second half and eight overall. So now let's see what they can do. Trailing by five with three minutes, 23 seconds remaining in regulation. Yeah, I think we're just seeing things today out of IEP that it's, you know, it's things that you would see from a team in November. I mean, they're playing their third game. It's March, but it's really November. Right. Exactly right. And they're playing a team that has played 10 games. But uh, give no excuses. You give Clarion credit. They've played well here today. Let's see, but this is not over. We still have 318 to go. Morris went for the steal, didn't get it. Jarman is tripped up and fouled. It's going to be on number 10. Tamawa Suleiman. His second. And Jarman with 24. Must be a one and one. Is at the line, yep, for a one and one. And he got it. I'm sorry, correction. I've got him two, four, six, eight, nine. That's, he's, he's got 27. And now he missed. Uh, Porterfield gets a rebound. 74 68, Clarion. Foster left wing over to Poles and back out to Morris. They post Porterfield up high and bring him out now, setting up a pick as Morris goes to the left sideline. Morris goes in the paint, tries to drive, and is fouled on the way. I'm going to say it was on the floor, but this will be a two-shot foul because that is well more than 10. I think that's on Branch and uh, Morris. Two for two from the line. Four points today. Dave playing in the second half only today. Knocks down the free throw. Hawks within five, 2.53 remaining. Second one ready to go, and the dip and flip, yep. Four point difference, 74-70 Clarion. 2.50 in ticking. Here come the Golden Eagles. Jarman with 28 points. Still with a basketball against Armani. All kinds of dribbles goes down low. Rejected by Armani. And then swiped away and they get it back. And then IUP gets it back. <laughs> That's a double turnover here. Look at the Clarion coach Pitts with his hands up over his head like we had Armani it. We is Armani really is here. He got his ankle landed on there. Yeah, he's he's limping noticeably. Uh, take your time. Gets to the foul line and shake it off here. You have two shots. Two thirty-one remaining. His first one is good. So he's made three in a row now. Twenty-one for Foster. Seventy-four, seventy-one, seventy-four, seventy-two. An IUP is within its closest they've been. Yeah, it's closest it's been. Yep. Uh, well, it was three nothing, so it's <laughs> the closest. Okay, it's yeah. Been. Seventy-four, seventy-two. They're done. See if they can get a stop here on the left sideline with it. It's Kelly. Kelly looking back door, but Kelly still holding the basketball. Gives it to Jarman. Jarman guarded by a much bigger 
Sue Lyman shoots it over him and misses. Rebound. Boy, Lemon looked like he pushed off, but he got the rebound. Double dribble. And he double dribbles. Well, he turned it over. He'd... Either one. Well, here we go, Jack. Chance to tie, take the lead. Or take, yeah, with 2.04 remaining. <laughs> and uh, you, when you know, uh, the thought in my mind says overtime. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that kind of year. All right, he's taking a timeout. Timeout here. with two minutes to go exactly in regulation. Trailing Clary in 74 72. It's a 30 second timeout because everybody. If you want to reach more customers, advertise your business affordably, increase sales, and grow your business, this message is for you. Hi, I'm Mark Burdick, Vice President and General Manager. At Renda Broadcasting, our marketing and digital team will take your advertising to new heights. Your business will soar with Renda Broadcasting and Digital. So if you're just getting your business off the ground or your existing business is sputtering, let our team go to work for you. Call Renda Broadcasting and Digital at 724-465-4700. ...into this program, but now they're going to try to tie or go ahead. And uh, just a little under two minutes to go in regulation. Morris gives it up to Armani on a bounce pass against the man-to-man. -man. Gives to the cutter. It's Porterfield. Back to the hoop. Porterfield working on Lemon. Porterfield down low. Turns, fade, shoots. Counted. We're tied at 74. 142 to go. 13 points for Porterfield. The bench is really up. 74 all. Finally tied the game with a minute and a half to play. Over to Lemon. Lemon fakes. Lemon still with a dribble. Lemon down to right. Knocks down the defender. No call. Puts it up with the left hand wildly. No good. Gets the rebound. IUP ball. He's lying out of bounds. Yeah, he rebounded his own shot. I think he might have thrown that off the board purposely. Maybe passing it himself. Could be, but he's uh, Lemon needs some help uh, to get up. Okay. He, he, yeah, he landed hard on the on his back, and so IUP will have a chance to take the lead for the first time in this game. Well, we've got 118 118 go. remaining in regulation. Well, uh, same deal here. I'm putting it in on Monty Foster, and they, hey, nice job by Ethan Porterfield that last time down. Just uh, staying patient, making a nice move in the post. Dave Morris brings it into four court, calls timeout. With 113 remaining in regulation and a tie game. This will be another 30-second timeout, and uh, Tommy D is going to check in. He doesn't know where to check in because the scores <laughs> table is on the other side. Yeah, we're just reversed here, you know. Oh, well, this has been fun and uh, a struggle, but fun to do again. And I look up there, and I see Ed Fry Arena, and I think about Ed. We lost him in this last year. Yep, at, a wonderful uh, man. 80 years old, yeah, what a uh, just a tremendous guy. Uh, I've done a lot of banquets with him, you know, with all American banquets and all that. He always comes up with something funny. Oh, and just, it's, it's, what a sense of humor! I just, yeah, oh my. And a great musician. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, you know, I remember back when I first started working with Gazette in 1984. Back then, you know, no internet and you know, sports information isn't really following the cross country team around. So <laughs> he's calling in his results at night and just. Oh, just he you know, and just uh, and the late uh, Doc Raymore, uh, you know, they they just did a tremendous job here with everybody. All right, here we go. Let's see if IUP can take the lead with 70 seconds to go in regulation. Armani gives the ball over to to Porterfield. Dave Morris gets by his man, driving layup. IUP leads. 76 to 74, with just under a minute to go. Now Kelly will come for court. That bench is really into it. Over to Lemon. On the right side, it goes to Jarman. Bad away. pass. Tommy D comes up with the ball two on one. Lobs it into Suleim, and then he oh, lays up, it. and he missed it. But he gets it back outside on his own rebound. Man, oh, day, he had missed an easy shot, but fortunately he got the rebound. And now they're counting it down, 30 seconds and counting. Two-point lead for IUP. Dave Morris on the sideline with it. 
Day feeds it right side to Tommy D. On its way, nope. but it won't go. And it's an air ball, and Clarion, did they save it? They did save it. But we have an injured player over here. It's Lemon. And he's down. He's face down. And IUP's uh, athletic people coming over here. Trainer Rob Barron and uh, now Clarion. Check it on him. That was a tough uh, circumstances there for IUP when it was a solo man that came down and had that. Again, nice play by Tommy to get the ball to him, and then you think oh, this one's gone down. It's going to be a four-point game. Oh, boy, and Lemon is up, but he's points. running. A, he's going to stay. Is he going to stay? Well, he can't. Well, he has to go out. Yeah, he has to go out. He's running. I think he's going. I thought he was going to the locker room. He's just running it off. Wow, he's had a heck of a game, too. Played hard, 15.8 remaining, 76-74. The Hawks finally took the lead on Dave Morris layup. Well, if you're clearing here, what are you going to do? I think I'm putting the ball in Jarman's hands. And I think so. I think he's he the get. man, yeah. He can create for himself or find somebody else. Or you know what, if you let, your, yeah. you let Branch take it, uh, he's been a pretty solid handle point guard today. Yeah, I think uh, get in there and try to find somebody. Jarman said has 27 points today. Uh, Moraz second half is pretty good. He has two trays, two deuces for 18 in the game and a 15.8 to go. Uh, wow, <laughs> this has been something because the Hawks didn't take the lead until that layup with how much time was well, left? I had it just at the at one minute one, mark. one minute, yeah. Well, this has really been fun. We're not done yet. We hope you've enjoyed the telecast today. Thanks to the people at SeaWorld Satellite and Hook Up and D over here running things and uh, Rick Miller and company. The IEP scored the last eight here. It was 74-68. Uh, well, that was just the opposite in the first game they played against Gannon after Armandi had a seven-point play. Because of double technicals, he had four free throws on a tray, but then they didn't score again. Now, this is a different day. He's not walking really that great, Armandi. He's going to be sore later on, that's for sure. So let's see. Uh, Clarion's got to go three-quarter court. They have 15.8 in which to do it. Yeah, and we'll they see if, see if they go faster. Hold for the last one. Over to Kelly. Kelly to Jarman. Here he is. Keep your eyes on him. He's being guarded by Morris. They try to double team him. He comes to the left sideline. He drives. He puts it up. He banks it. No good. Rebound as Suleiman has it. And we got a foul with 1.5 to go. A foul on Clarion. Wow. And How they, about this? <laughs> it's unreal. And Jarman is still down, but I think he's more disgusted than hurt. Yeah, he, he gave it a go, but we're going to see if IUP can add to this with 1.5 seconds. Tomawa Suleiman is at the line where he is two for three today. It's very, very quiet in here. A shot is no good. All right, got to make this one at least. Yeah, you don't want to lose on a, uh, or well, go to overtime yeah. on a 70 footer at the buzzer. Uh, Lemon's back in the game, by the way, after his little run after he. You know, he was he was down. Let's watch the second shot here. Nobody else in the rebound spots on its way. And that one is good. One out of two. So the three-point difference here with one and a half. And Clarion will set it up for a possession. Trailing IUP 77 to 74. <laughs> Trailed all day. Uh, uh, yeah. Back at the end and it's a good way for us to get a workout, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Know, you know, we talk about the plays on offensive end, but IEP got this done with defense, creating some turnovers out here and getting some stops and going the other way. Yeah, I have uh, the Hawks with eight turnovers in the second half. Clarion has 10, at least. Well, I have Clarion with 19, so that would be 11 in the second 11 half, and IEP with 20, and that would be eight in the second half. Mm -hmm. Boards, I have 20, 30, 37 to 32. Uh, IUP, 37-32. Clarion's done a little bit better job there. IUP gave up a handful of offensive rebounds here in the second half. All right. With uh, one and a half, 1.5 remaining. 
the Hawks by three. Clarion's got to go the full court, and they're going to take another timeout. IEP took that one after they saw Clarion's alignment. I, okay. I, if you're Clarion, Clarion, I think they had Lemon down here at the opposite three-point line. I think he tried to throw something long to him and see if he can catch and shoot. Yeah, he's pretty athletic, and uh, it's if they go with the same setup, Mason Moraz, who is a 6'3 kid, uh, will be putting the ball in play. And your IEP here, if they do throw that long pass, you want to contest the shot, but you don't want to foul a three-point shooter uh, with no time on the clock. Yeah. As we mentioned, they've only hit two trays in the second half after 11 in the first half. Yeah, IEP took away a lot of those opportunities yeah. in the second half. I'm sure that had a lot to do with the halftime talk, huh? Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, when somebody's raining threes on you like that. And Clarion, I thought, did a real good job of executing their offense to get them. It's not like, uh, you know, they were making lucky shots or anything like it, but they weren't banking them in, that's for sure. No, you're right. All right. They break the huddle. Everybody in their... Yogi would say they're respectable places, and uh, Moraz will <laughs> will put the ball in play. Nobody on the inbounds, man. One and a half seconds, 77-74. Looking for the long ball. They're looking for Lemon. They got him midcourt to the right sideline. Shot on its way. In and out. I'll tell you what, nice job of getting the shot. It really was. They had it set up perfectly, and Lemon is down. I think he hurt his ankle. Uh, Branch got the shot from the right sideline, and, uh, boy, they, they had that set up perfectly, and the shot came off the back. It did hit the rim, and the final, and IUP prevails. Coming back all day long, finally getting a layup by Dave Morris with a minute to go, and they win it 77-74. to 74. Ooh. Trying Man, to see oh, the dang. biggest deficit here in the second half, 15. Uh -huh. 15 at 56-41. That sound right? Yeah, that sounds sounds right. I'll tell you what, I'm going to add up the book here, and we'll just give final stats, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, let's see. Dave Morris, two, four, six, had eight points today. Armonte, three, four, six, had 22. Let's see if I have that right. Four, six, nine, ten, twenty-two. Uh, Ethan Porterfield had 13. Tommy D, 14. Uh, Suleiman, five, six, seven points in the game. Six points for Radford. Seven points for Uzi Diop for a total of 77. Uh, Jarman led the way. I think he had 27, 4, 6, 8, 9. Yeah, he did. He had 27. And Lemon was in with uh, 22. They were the big scores. Branch had 4. Moraz, 18. So they had three players there in big double figures and three for Reynolds for their total of 74. So with a loss, Clarion drops uh, their three-game winning streak has stopped, and they go to four and seven, and IUP goes to two and one, and, yeah, every, those, and everything counts. Yeah, and those three guys had all of, all but seven of Clarion's points, mm -hmm. and I got some stats here. Okay, from Ryan Rebholtz, the sports information director. Uh, let's see who we're going to start with. IUP shot. 28 for 58, that is, where's my percentages here? 28 for 58. Well, let's just do it this way. Let's go across. Okay. <laughs> they were 15 for 30 in the first half, 13 for 28 in the second. And for the game, they shot 48%. 48. At uh, 28 for 58, uh, 6 for 18 from 3. So in the second half, they were, what, 4 for 11 from 3. And uh, ended up with 38 rebounds and... 18 turnovers, 17 assists to Armani with seven. 20, How about the free throws? 22.7 assists for Armani. Free throws were 15 for 25. Mm -hmm. And Armani was seven for 10 there. And um, let's go to the Clarion page. Clarion ended up shooting. 
Yeah, they were 58% in the first half. Yeah, 58% in the first half. Second half, they were 10 for 32. That's 41 or that's 31%. So uh, shot 44% for the game. So much better job on defense by AP in the second half. 19 turnovers and 11 of those came in the second half. And um, led to rebounding. What I say? They had 37, led to rebounding 37-34. Just check your, well, here's uh, Lemon had 22 points. 22 and uh, Jarman. rebounds. How Mraz many rebounds? 10. 10. Mraz had 18 points, 11 rebounds. They both had double-doubles. Let me check IEP's individual rebounds. Uh, Sewell made in with 11, so he had 7 points, 11 rebounds. Yeah, he's getting uh, double-figure rebounding every game. He also had four assists. Mm. Three block shots, a steal. Yeah, he's going to be a he's going to be a player. Yeah, he uh, did some nice things out there. Today. Yeah, yeah. Got another candidate for rookie of the year. <laughs> yeah, every, well, every year. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, we saw one today for, for Clarion the Jarman. He yeah, is, he he's is good. really good. Yeah, he's good. Tony, it's been great. Yeah, it's been good to sit with you here again, Jack. Yeah, six feet apart, but we're still <laughs> in the same building and. We'll get together for another broadcast somewhere along the way. It'll be uh, before you know it, but it was uh, it was uh, entertaining today. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was it was just fun to be back here and see it again. I hope the fans that uh, you know were watching online uh, appreciate it and had a good time doing it and sitting around with family or whatever they were doing today. It's just you know it's been a, IEP basketball has been an important part of people's lives and you know from November through March. Exactly. And, uh, it's just, been a big void here this year and today was a little bit of respite from it yep this helped a little bit hey thanks to the folks at sea world satellite and everybody for setting this thing up 77 74 iup wins it this is jack benedict and for tony kakanya we thank you very much for listening and you have yourself a major league evening